Welcome back to Week 8 of the Scout Report, where we take a look at all the, uh, or at least most, of the draft eligible prospects for the 2020 NFL Draft. This week's a little different. We're actually going to my mid-season rankings. Uh, we're going to look at the top 10 at each position. We're going to kind of hammer through. I won't talk about all of them. I talked a lot about them in my mock draft, so check that out. Did this because there's an eye up there. There's an eye you can click. Or you can just go onto the page and click the video. It's not that hard. But before we get into that, what's crack a lack? It's your boy, Bro Schmo. Just in case you did not know, so go ahead, leave a thumbs up if you enjoy the content, and subscribe if you haven't already. Become a bro and subscribe. It's much appreciated, much obliged. Uh, the channel is blowing up steadily. Steadily. Uh, I appreciate the draft videos. have gotten a lot of love, a lot of hate too, but hey comes with the territory just trust in my opinion you know so uh let's have cordial conversation don't hurt my feelings up in here geez anyway let's go ahead let's talk quarterbacks and right now especially after this week i love burrows burrow has just been amazing 29 touchdowns to three interceptions He's at 80% um, as far as his completion rating. He's been super accurate on uh, throws that are 10 yards or more. It's just everything you want to see. I think he's definitely past two at this point. Two will miss next week. But, again, I, I think not a lot of the NFL will be as high on two as most people are. But Burrow, man, he's, he's really come out of nowhere. Now, we know about, it looks like Jake Fromm is going to be just a game manager, but I mean, there's still a lot. I think his ceiling is going to be Alex Smith-esque, which is still good for a franchise quarterback. He'll probably fall somewhere into the first round, but these two next two guys I want to talk about are going to the third round. Jordan Love, I really think he's going to come back to Utah State for a senior year. He's got seven touchdowns to nine interceptions. It's not been good. He's uh, only got a completion percentage of 60%. Uh, he's really been pressing, like, just trying to force passes into not even tight windows, walls, if you would. It just, it, he hasn't looked that good this year, and it's really hurting the stock. It, I could see it falling much more as the year goes on. But Jalen Hurts, man, he is rising. He already has 30 touchdowns on the season, 20 uh, passing. He's got 10 rushing. He's got 700 rushing yards. He, he could be a fast riser when this is all said and done. And then I got, of course, Jamie Newman. I've been been loving on some Jamie Newman. He's a super accurate passer, not afraid to throw the ball downfield. I think he stays for one more year, but we'll see about that. Let's go ahead. Let's talk about the wide receivers because this is a very gifted wide receiver class. And, I mean, it starts at the top. Judy and Lamb, really, they're, they're vying neck to neck. It's, it's going to be... Really, whoever whoever wins out of this, what, you're going to get put on a so-so team. Or essentially, whoever loses out, I should say. But uh, I could definitely see these receivers falling a little bit down the draft just because it's such a good draft. Teams will probably be jumping at other positions to add, um, add talent, knowing they could get receivers later. But Henry Ruggs, the other receiver at Alabama, man, dude is fast. He's got great speed. Uh, he's he's definitely a first round talent. Uh, I love T. Higgins. He's got great size, good speed, and let's go talk about some of these um, second round receivers because Tyler Johnson, a guy that I was really high on, thought he would be in the first round discussion. Still kind of is. It's just I mentioned this in my mock video. Um, the drops and the drops come in bulks, you know, like he had three a couple of weeks ago, and you want to. That was something he wanted to improve on once he when he returned this year was he wanted to stop dropping the ball in in those large bulks like he has i think five or six drops on the season but three of those came last week so i don't know what's really up with that and then andy gandy golden man a guy out of liberty not a lot of people are talking about because they're an independent and they fo don't face a lot of great competition but he's got really good size i think um he's 6'4 220 i think he'll be in that 4'4 range and 877 yards five tds the guy the guy could go in the second round when it's all said and done and then tight ends let's talk about tight ends because i still have jared pigney ranked first 
it's really a tight race between the top three. Pickney is the most athletic of the bunch, but I do think O'Grady uh, out of Arkansas, he's the most physically gifted. He's the best all around. He could actually contribute as an inline blocker, but there are the red flags over maybe some character concerns there. We're dealing with the suspension early in the year. But a guy a lot of people might be surprised is Albert uh, Okwibanam out of Missouri. Albert O, I got him down here in the, what, fourth? Fourth round. And it's because we know what he can do. He, he's a reliable target, but he was mainly going to be a big threat in the red zone. Yet, this year, he's already he's 3 of 7 on contested catch opportunities. So it doesn't really look too good. I mean, he's not having the breakout year as some of these others guys are, like um, Josh uh, Peterson, uh, what Bryce uh, Bryson Hopkins. So I think there's a couple of guys better, more, or yeah, for the most part, just ahead of him on the list. He could definitely sneak back into day two, but currently I have him as that day three. Now, offensive tackle, very, very good class coming in here. Didn't look like at the beginning that we were going to have a good offensive line class, but it's coming around. Uh, as far as like my top three, Werfs, Thomas, and Leatherwood, they're all kind of interchangeable to me. I think they've all proven enough. They're all going to be top 10 picks. Uh, Leatherwood, I loved before the season. I had him as a third round prospect. Um, I love his versatility, but this, I mean, his footwork is great. It's amazing. He is versatile, but he definitely could make it as a left tackle in the league. Uh, Josh Jones is a guy I've already raved about for centuries, or at least for the most part of the season. But uh, Jedrick uh, Wills, man, he probably is the best run blocker, and he's a guy you could probably sneak his way into the first round. And Lucas Nyane. Uh, at a TCU, he's very protected there in that system, but he's been a phenomenal pass uh, blocker. He's a he's a little loosey goosey on his technique. Like he could get uh, he could he's a bit raw, but all the intangibles are there. And then a guy that I know a lot of people are high on. I'm not not that high on him. I have him as fourth round. Liam Itchenberg. He has great technique, but from that perspective, like probably he's second to none. He just doesn't provide much as an athlete. I don't think he'll go much further as a solid starter in the NFL, which then again, the solid starter at tackle is hard to find, but it's not enough to put you in that day two, I think, conversation because there's no real upside. His game against Michigan um, upcoming, that'll be a real, real testing, uh, a real good test, a real good, uh, what, do you, what would you say? A, it's a good. It'll be a good test on the eyes to see if he can compete against some of the that stellar front seven there for Michigan. And then on the interior, Natane Moody, he's his first rounder. I rave about him in my, my mock draft. Uh, Tyler uh, Biotish, I mean, he he's going to be a first rounder. It's a bit of a downish year by his standards, which are pretty lofty, but he's still looking really good. You could honestly, he's going to be ideal in a zone blocking scheme, so you could probably play guard or center. So... I look for him definitely to be a late first round pick. And then Logan Stern, uh, Steinberg was a guy that I was like, man, I thought this guy was solely a run blocker. He's thrown, he's shown some stuff in the past. But this guy, man, he keeps getting called for penalties, false start, holding. I mean, he has 10 on the year, which matches, I mean, he had last year. So, bit of a concern. A guy I do want to highlight, though, is Michael Onwenu out of Michigan this guy he could be a sneaky riser he could definitely find himself uh, maybe in that second round uh, this guy is just so hard to overcome physically he does not get bullied and he's just another guy I really really like so let's talk about the running backs because this is controversial I don't have any going in the first round just because I don't think running back is a first round position anymore we'll probably see at least one go but at this point right now DeAndre Swift, uh, Travis Etienne, they're they're both vying. They're one A, one B. I think Swift is the better pass catcher. At least he's proven to be the pa uh, better pass catcher because Etienne doesn't really get those opportunities there at Clemson. Uh, but definitely Etienne is the better like playmaker, home run threat. Jonathan Taylor, I've talked about him all year. Uh, we got dude Hubba Bubba Hubbard, man, Oklahoma State. This guy is is ridiculous he's leading the uh 
what he's leading a uh, leader rusher by like almost 300 yards the only concern i have with him is his freshman season freshman redshirt uh redshirt season he had 22 receptions 229 yards two touchdowns this year he only has six receptions for 24 yards i want to know why they aren't passing him more it might honestly it might be a, it's probably a quarterback thing because they're traditionally they oklahoma state they're an air raid offense they they they're thrown constantly they haven't really been that this year so maybe it's a little inexperienced at the quarterback and then Kishon vaughn out of vanderbilt the dude is electric i love his um just ability to force tacklers to miss he's been a good pass catcher 223 receiving yards on the year and then at the bottom here i got james robinson the illinois state product the small school product 744 yards 12 touchdowns just utterly dominating but doesn't really get an opportunity to shine in the past game so that's why i have him here at 10. now on to the defense let's talk safety because that probably looks like the weakest position group as far as on defense uh, Grant Delpit, dude's going to be a top 10 pick. He's phenomenal, could be a better tackler, but we could say this about a lot of the safeties. As a matter of fact, Ashton Davis, this man could cover a lot of ground. He's Him and uh, Jalen Hawkins, they've been a fierce safety duo there at California. It, they've just been phenomenal. But Davis, again, a guy that doesn't really come up and tackle, but that's not what you're really going to want him or ask him to do. He's going to be back there being a ball hawk. Now, a guy that uh, I know a lot of people are high on, um, Xavier McKinney out of Alabama. Uh, and he, he hasn't been terrible this year. He just hasn't been that good in coverage compared to last year. He's already allowed two touchdowns, 11 first downs. But the guy, I still have, still have him as a day two pick. So quality safety, J.R. Reed and uh, what, what was it? Uh, Loey Gilman. I feel these guys are both their box safeties only in the league. Uh, so that's why I have them so low. The box safety position is not as coveted as it once was. Uh, Levante Taylor, I'm surprised not a lot more, not, not a lot of people are really high on him. Uh, I think he is probably going to be an excellent, excellent slot corner that you could also probably use as a uh, dime linebacker. So I'm a bit surprised by that. But these are my safety rankings. I don't know why I said it like that. I'm must be on something but let's talk about corner because this corner class is underrated and underappreciated uh jeffrey okado we all know hands down dude's probably gonna be the first corner off the board but trevon diggs has really moved up my board i ha had him in the over my overrated or overhyped prospects list just because we hadn't seen enough from him but oh, well at this point i've seen enough the guy he's gonna be a great outside corner he's he sees the pass and then he attacks the hype is gonna be real on this guy coming in um cj henderson is not far behind him honestly these guys are like neck and neck uh henderson's very competitive very athletic he's gonna be a lot of what the, he's the type of corner the nfl covets very highly then cameron dantzler this guy this weekend put up a great performance against lsu uh against that joe burrow led offense that's just been lighting people up he's very long he's very physical i really like him in the second round uh diamador lenoir uh dude might be this might be the best run defender in this uh draft i i like him as an off uh, coverage corner because like he's really good at coming in and just blasting those screenplays so i'd rather rather than having him in a as a man having him in a zone i think would be quite nice so let's go to the linebackers because linebackers is very interesting it's such a hard i say this all the time but i don't think people really get it. it's such a hard position to project in drafts just because the nfl man they're so it, it, it it's just a strange position a lot of some teams are like ah, oh, we'll just take the journey man we'll take the veteran experience at linebacker and you just you honestly unless you're like a balls of the wall talent you don't you're not really going to get drafted high as a linebacker in the first three rounds so i got isaiah simmons i mean the dude's a top 10 talent easy dylan moses coming off the injury don't know if he'll declare i don't i have a feeling he won't but zach bond out of wisconsin because he plays edge for him but he's kind i i i like this cop i've seen as a joe schubert from the browns 
where he can he was an under undersized edge rusher, undersized pass rusher, and he's been wonderful there for the Browns playing linebacker. I think uh, Zach Bond is in that same uh, caliber. Uh, as for Troy Dye and David Woodward, my really only questions about these guys is their size because their play has been phenomenal. And then I want to talk about Charles Snowden for Virginia, another guy I don't see coming out for this draft, but he is eligible because he's kind of without a position. We don't know what he'll play. Will he be an edge rusher? I don't think he can be an edge rusher in the NFL, then, but he's been able to in that Virginia offense. They've been... um. They've given him the freedom to actually drop back into coverage. He's been pretty decent. But, again, I I, I kind of want to know where he's going to end up playing because he's got really good size at 6'7". Then Kenneth Murray, a lot of people are very, very high on it. I get, I get it. He's a sideline-to-sideline side player. He's very athletic. But the guy has no playmaking skills to speak of. He is maybe allowed an incompletion this year. But I haven't seen interception or fumbles i haven't seen any playmaking skill and that's why i have him here quite frankly you know second half of the season he could blow up and he could fly up this uh these rankings but as of now as of now so everyone hold your stinking horses man man look at me blasting look at me look at me going off but anyway let's talk about the defensive interior because this is a very fun class as well the first three guys they're literally they're kind of like Werfs, Thomas, and Leatherwood. They're kind of interchangeable. Wilson, Kinlaw, and Brown. They're all really good. Wilson's got extremely strong hands. Uh, I love the raw potential of Kinlaw. And Brown's finally starting to show he has the ability to be a pass rusher. But Jordan Elliott's not really talked about. He is lit up as a pass rusher in the Big 12. The guy is been phenomenal he should see his name fly up a few boards Lev, uh levi on Wuzerich, i don't know if he'll come out he put up a pretty poor performance against oregon granted it's oregon has a phenomenal offensive line but still it's a bit worrisome so i could see him maybe staying and then raekwon davis is a guy honestly he's probably gonna fly up boards just simply because of his size his length um he's a phenomenal run defender but at this point, I'd like to see, I'd like to see him be more of a pass rusher. He hasn't really ever shown that. He's shown the ability to do it, but he hasn't. It hasn't been a consistent thing with him. And then this edge class is also sneaky, sneaky good. It starts at the top. Chase Young, of course. Uh, Epinesa, uh, honestly, might end up getting passed by Julian Okawara because this guy's sp speed. And power is incredible. This guy could be running in, like, he'll probably be a 4-5 or maybe even 4-4. The dude's amazing. Curse Weaver, he, his ability to move inside and outside. I love the versatility. But let's talk about the freakish athleticism of Yatir Gross Matos. Probably will find himself in the first round. Um, but again, still a little raw for me, but he has been getting after the passer constantly. And I die. I, I'm just loving it. Nah, nah, da, 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 da. I'm loving it. And Alton Robinson, big issue with this guy is this red flags. Again, two years ago, so they're not big issues for me. And then Clavon Chazon, a guy a lot of people are projecting in the first round. He's only played five of seven games this year. He's missed two games this year being banged up. He missed all of last year because he was banged up. And he only has two sacks through five games. So I see the potential. I get it. But... I don't think we sh should be talking about him as a first round prospect just yet. That's it for the video. Go ahead and do the YouTube things. Much appreciated, much obliged. I should have the start sit stuff out tomorrow or Thursday. Depends when I want to record it. But uh, yeah, thanks for all the love. It's much appreciated. But until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.